Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news happening right now in Sterling Heights. Two women shot in a restaurant parking lot. The shooter is on the run right now. Thanks for joining us here at 5. I'm Karen Drew I'm, in for Devin Skillion. And I'm Kimberly Gill. That shooting happened right around 1.15 this afternoon in the parking lot of the old Ruby Tuesdays restaurant on Van Dyke, just north of 15 Mile. Megan Woods is live there for us tonight with that update. Megan. Kimberly, those uh, two women are now in stable condition. Police telling us one of them was found here in the parking lot shot and then another banging on the window, drive through window over there at Chipotle. Now, police are still searching for the man who shot them as we speak all over this area. Now, Sterling Heights police chief says the two women were in a black Kia when the suspect walked up. There was some sort of altercation and the women were shot and that's when that man got away on foot. We know that there are several schools nearby. Earlier on, a few Warren Consolidated schools, Utica schools, and Stellantis were all on lockdown. Those lockdowns have been lifted since then, but the search for this man continues. This person is not in custody. We don't believe uh, the suspect to be a danger to the general public because of the relationship, and I think it was very targeted and isolated to that parking lot in that incident, but um, I would like everyone to be aware that this incident occurred in that general area and to have their eyes open, be ultra aware of their surroundings. We spoke to locals who say this Ruby Tuesday has been closed for some time now, so it's still unclear why the three decided to meet here. But again, we do know that they know each other and police are out there. Several agencies are out here looking for that man. If you know anything or saw anything, you're asked to call Sterling Heights Police. Live in Sterling Heights, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Hey, Megan, thank you. Right now, investigators in Dearborn Heights are working to find out what caused a house to explode. Check out the destruction as crews work to put out the fire late this morning. It happened at a home on Powers Avenue near the Southfield Freeway and Annapolis Street. Grant Herms is there live tonight. Grant, nobody was in that home when this happened, right? Kimberly, thankfully nobody was home here, but this is all that's left here just behind me. This call came into firefighters at about 1130 and in just 20 minutes, the home collapsed and now looks like this. Neighbors here describe the telltale signs of a gas leak and potential explosion, and it was one of those neighbors quick thinking that likely saved lives. Fire crews on scene after a tragic house fire in Dearborn Heights. Neighbors saying the flames could be seen above their roofs. The evidence of how dramatic and dangerous the fire was shown on the scorched trees in the backyard. As far as we know, nobody's at home. No cars were in the driveway. Neighbors reporting nobody around. The entire house shook. I actually thought maybe somebody ran into the house or something. Kaylee Martin next door was the first to call 911 and rushed over to save anyone who might have been inside. We were yelling, trying to make sure nobody was in the house, um, trying to get the neighbors out of the houses because the gas smell was just so strong. But then the fire took over. Within minutes, it, the flames started near the gas meter and just up in flames. While there was no one home, there were two dogs inside. Animal control able to collect one dog right away from a crate inside the burnt out home. Fire crews rescuing the other dog that ran off sometime later. The homes along this block of Powers Avenue are older and closer together. Kaylee's quick action likely saving other homes from the fire, including her own. It was, it was pretty bad. I mean, that was like my first instinct was to call because God forbid, I mean, our house is right here in my car and everything, so yeah. Sadly, the home that did catch fire is a total loss. I was able to talk to the homeowners who were here just a bit ago. They didn't want to go on camera, but they said that this is a total loss like you just heard, and they don't know how this all started it. They weren't told. They said now they have to go pick up their two dogs from Michigan Humane, and they're going to live with family, at least for the time being. Kimberly? Yeah. So, Grant, DTE was on the scene today as well. I saw some of their trucks in your video. Was there another power issue? Thankfully, no power issues. They were digging here. You can see this is what they left behind by, with that backhoe today. They were checking their gas lines as well as the power lines that are running overhead here to make sure that they didn't get damaged by the flames. Just about 10 minutes ago, DTE released a statement saying they did an investigation and said that their gas lines were working properly at the time mm -hmm. of the fire. So more questions and answers here this afternoon. Yeah. Back to you. Okay, Grant, thank you.
A Detroit Fire Department medic is under arrest tonight. It's in connection to a suspected road rage shooting this morning over in Redford Township. Let's get out to Sean Lay. He is live in Redford Township right now. And Sean, you've been digging on this, and I understand the fire department is responding to you tonight. Correct. They texted me a statement. I'll read it to you in just a second. But this happened along Beach Daily. You can see how busy it is right now. Well, this happened at 8 this morning, and traffic backs up here. The next light is where people get on I-96. So a busy time, and apparently this medic did not like the fact that another driver would not let her in. And we've learned tonight three shots were fired. This is a road rage incident northbound on Beach Daily from 96. Local four cameras in Redford this morning. This is Beach Daily in Glendale, just south of I-96. You are looking at police investigating shots fired during a road rage incident just before 8 a.m., the morning rush hour. People could have been hit by those shots. The uh, victim didn't let her in. She pulled up next door and fired at least three shots at her vehicle. We have confirmed tonight that the driver police took into custody as a 34-year-old area woman. We have also confirmed that her career is to save lives as a medic with Detroit EMS. We are not naming the medic right now. She is in custody, but has not yet been formally charged. Police tell us what sparked the violence. The medic allegedly did not like a driver not letting her into traffic this morning, and multiple shots were fired. Chief of Detroit EMS, Sean Larkins, telling me tonight, quote, the department was made aware by Redford police of the arrest of an off-duty fire department employee by an outside police agency. The employee has been removed from active duty pending the outcome of the active police investigation. This is an active police investigation. The department can offer no further comment at this time. Sources telling me tonight a gun was recovered. Now that medic did not stick around here. Police arrested her in a neighborhood just about a mile from here. Interesting, Karen, the driver here really doing the right thing, getting on with 911, but not sticking around either. She drove over to Redford Township Police right away for safety reasons. We're live tonight in Redford. Sean Lake, Local 4, back to you. All right, thank you, Sean. Today, Columbus, Ohio, swarming with Michigan State fans ahead of the Spartans' big first round matchup against USC. Spartans pulled off the win and are now headed to the next round. Jamie Edmonds is live in Columbus for us tonight as fans celebrate this big win, Jamie. Guys, Tom Izzo joked he saw a lot of green today, <laughs> didn't know if it was for the Spartans or for St. Patty's, but he embraced them all. Despite some dreary weather, it's always sunny for Spartan fans during the NCAA tournament. They had no school today, so it was beautiful timing. It worked out. We drove down for the game. Just a short drive down 75, MSU fans traveled well for this first round matchup. Number seven, MSU, taking on number 10, USC. Nice go green. Nice go green. Inside, the crowd was probably 90-10 green and white, including some VIPs like Coach Mel Tucker, Mark D'Antonio, and hey, there's Kirk Gibson. But was it green for Sparty or green for St. Patty? In some cases, it was both. At Michigan State, we call it St. Sparty's Day because it's a two-in-one. It's March Madness and it's St. Patrick's Day, so it's an all-in-one. And the team did not disappoint, giving this home crowd a W, a great way for Tom Izzo to start his record-breaking 25th consecutive NCAA run. Oh, it was great. Our fans were just awesome. They've been awesome all year. They've been awesome for years. But this year, with a little bit of up and down and some of the things that have gone on, our fans have been special, and uh, a lot of them must have traveled down here because uh, that place was, was hopping with Michigan State people. Marquette. And of course, win. Michigan oh, State alive. beat Delivers. USC, so they move on. And Marquette just won, if you heard the yelling. So they meet each other on Sunday. No game time for that just yet. Coming up in sports, we'll talk about those keys to victory that happened today over the Trojans. We're live in Columbus. Jamie Edmonds, back to you. Sounds great. Jamie, we'll check back in with you a little bit later in sports. Well, if you are seeing more green than usual yeah. today, you are not alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Shamrocks, green beer, leprechauns, you name it, on full display as people celebrate St. Patrick's Day. People coming out in big waves to join in on the fun. Some people even calling off of work for that big day. We actually took the day off. So no. we, took, we took official days off, <laughs> if that matters, yeah. It's a Friday St. Patrick's okay. Day. Why not, right? 
So if you're looking for somewhere to celebrate the festivities, the Old Shillelagh downtown hosting its 48th annual St. Patrick's Day party. Kicked off at 7 this morning, still going strong. No matter where you celebrate, make sure to wear some green and have a good time. Okay, let's take a look at some live pictures from Ironwood in the Ooh, Western UP. That does not yes. look like St. Patrick's Day there. <laughs> they could see <laughs> up to a foot of snow by tomorrow morning. Uh, down here, though, we aren't going to see that much anytime soon, we hope. Yeah, I understand we can see a few flakes, but nothing too serious, right, Kim? No, nothing too serious. And I have to clarify, I'm not wearing green, for those of you that don't know, because the chroma key wall is green and you would just see a head and hands. Yes. My own mother, <laughs> I've done weather for 27 years, texted me and said, why aren't you wearing green today? <laughs> 27 years. 30, <laughs> God bless her. 37 right now at Metro Airport, 33 in Pontiac, but you've it's uh, much colder than it was yesterday by almost 20 degrees, 19 degrees colder right now than it was at the same time yesterday in Flint, Pontiac, Metro, 18 degrees colder in Howell and in Ann Arbor. Well, you saw that snow and it is moving through parts of the UP, but it's nice and quiet here. There's some lake effect snow, though, that's going to come our way tomorrow. So there's a winter weather advisory in the western part of the Great Lakes and a few of those lake effect showers will make their way to Metro Detroit. I'll have more details on that coming up, but you can always keep track of the forecast by downloading the 4-1 Weather app. Thank you, Kim. We are off and running on a Friday. Let's check in with Hank. Some big banks going belly up. Concerns about your money and now a new concern. Scammers trying to take advantage of you. I'm going to show you what's happening right now and how to protect yourself and your cash. All right, Hank, spring may be on the way, but some winter illnesses are staging a comeback ahead. The viruses doctors are seeing more of this week and what they're hoping will finally bring some relief. But first, all the votes haven't even been counted yet. Why a protest has already been made in the race for the next president of the UAW. We'll have that next. 